This is Jordan from Jersey, and these are the comics I read the week of July 22nd, 2009. But before we get started, I just want to say you don't want to miss my review for The Amazing Spider-Man issue 600, which can be found right here. I didn't want to put it in here because it would make the video too long, but uh, put it off in its own little nice one-shot for you. And speaking of one-shots, here we have Death Clock vs. The Goon, issue 1 of 1. This issue was a nice surprise for me, as I didn't know a Death Clock-themed uh, comic book was coming out until Saturday, Sunday. Uh, so it was really cool to be able to go to the store and pick up a book with some of my favorite cartoon characters in them. Love the show Metalocalypse. If you've never seen it, check it out. It's on Cartoon Network. It's about a band kind of like Spinal Tap, only taken to 11. And metal. With a lot of blood. So much blood. This issue is out of continuity for both Death Clock and the Goon, but it's still a fun romp as uh, Death Clock gets magically teleported into the Goon universe, and lots and lots of violent, bloody encounters ensue. Check it out. And speaking of violent, bloody encounters, Deadpool, Suicide Kings, issue 405. When we last left Deadpool in issue 3, he had just gotten his head blown apart by the Punisher. But, as we all know, that's not really going to stop Deadpool, and by the beginning of this issue, he's already healed. The Punisher killed Deadpool because he was framed for murder by Tombstone, an old-fashioned Spidey villain, and Spidey and Daredevil both make appearances in this book. Writing's solid. The art is also solid. You get some nice shots of Deadpool and the gang done up like uh, the Wizard of Oz characters from Marvel's Wizard of Oz adaptation. Well, I must say, I really do like the way that Barbary draws the hood. It's very, uh, very Spawn-like, and uh, he makes the hood look a lot cooler than most other books I've read of him. So if you like Deadpool, pick up this book. I liked it even more than I liked uh, Merc with a Mouse issue number one. I still wouldn't say it's quite as good as the main Deadpool title, but uh, it's still a very solid read. So let's journey away from Marvel for a bit and head over to IDW Publishing, where we have All Hair Megatron, issue 13, of 12. The series was originally supposed to be 12 issues long, but uh, at the end of issue 12, they informed the readers, including myself, that they'd be going on for several extra issues, which was weird, but I uh, can't say I hate it. What I did hate, and this is nothing against the, the cover artist, it's a solid cover, but I loved this style of propaganda poster cover that they'd been doing through the entire series. I picked up every issue that way. And for this issue, that kind of cover was the retailer incentive, which means schlubs like me can't always get it. My uh, comic book shop didn't order enough to get that retailer incentive. No fault of their own, but I would really love that cover, and I'd really love all my covers uh, to, to flow in that theme. So, boo to IDW. I don't know why you would do something like that. This issue is broken down in two smaller stories. The first one, Old Ways, features Optimus Prime and Ironhide reflecting on their relationship throughout the uh, Transformers universe. The second story, Uneasy Lies the Head, follows Starscream and the Decepticons in the wake of the battle that left Megatron on his last, uh, last few breaths, although it looks like he might pull through. Starscream has the Autobot Matrix of leadership and is debating on how he should use that to try and usurp the power that Megatron has left. Overall, I don't know if I can really endorse this issue. I liked All Hail Megatron, the series, and I, I liked the the idea it explored of Megatron actually beating the Autobots and, and taking over Earth. However, with the turns in the last few issues and this whole, oh, we're going to keep going, it might be one of those ones to check out and trade at, at your local library and see if you like it before you actually put down any money. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Heading back to Marvel, we have Avengers The Initiative, issue 26. And this issue is more set up for the, I'm sure, huge battle to come between the new Dark Initiative and the new Warriors and some of the other old Initiative students who have escaped the, uh, the grasp of Norman Osborn and his Dark Avengers. I won't go too deeply into the plot as a lot happens, but I will say that at the end of this issue, Tiger is pissed. And I'm very interested to see... Uh, what she is capable of when she is truly, truly angry when she gets a hold of Norman Osborn. And finally this week, we have Guardians of the Galaxy, issue 16. In this issue, the Guardians of the Galaxy are whisked away through time to the future where they meet the future Guardians of the Galaxy, which are actually the old Guardians of the Galaxy. Anyway, the old Guardians of the Galaxy books featured these characters, apparently, the ones right here on the cover even though they exist in the future of Marvel's universe. 
to our Guardians of the Galaxy, or Wisdom of the Future, where they discover Earth isn't really around anymore. And according to the new, or old, Guardians of the Galaxy, it seems what ended the Earth was what's happening in War of Kings. The rest of the issue focuses on the Guardians trying to get a message back to Adam Warlock in the Marvel Universe present so he can save the universe from the fault that will occur in War of Kings. As usual, there's nothing much negative I can say about Guardians of the Galaxy, although I will say the art isn't my favorite, but hey, it's still Guardians of the Galaxy, it's still great. Pick it up. And that's it for this week's reviews, but don't forget to go right here for my Amazing Spider-Man issue 600 review, and I'll see you next week.